Well, welcome, 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 you guys. Thank you for joining on the Rejects in the booth today. Uh, I got the big mans, SG3, say what's up. What's going on, guys? It's me. It's me. It's SG3. How you guys doing? Along with me, I got my main man over here, the big man, the big pufferino, Macaray, Macaray, Zachary, Zachary, Zach Attack. Go on, man. Say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Apparently, we're all big men today, I guess. I don't know how that trended, but yeah, I'm <laughs> your big boy, Zach Attack, Zach the Mac. <laughs> good to be here, guys. Let's have a good show, man. Yes, indeed. So, uh, today we got a few things, you guys, on the show. Got some good stuff going on. We got some NFL news that we missed out since last week. Uh, yes, we did not do a show just because, of course, of Good Friday. We took the weekend off of everything. Um, we are back in the booth. Get things going. Some stuff happened while we were gone. Some good NFL news, MMA talk, some bo- boxing stuff, and some NBA stuff, of course. So before we get on to the show, we're going to pass it over to SG3 before we get things rolling. Go ahead, SG3. All right, guys. <clears throat> Normally, this show is mostly about sports. You know, you guys, if you guys have been listening to us, it's mostly about sports. Uh, but currently, though, there is a really big issue um, that's going on, and I kind of just want to extend my, my, my prayers to this person, DMX. Oh, yes. Keep fighting the good fight, brother. Um, current for you guys... For most of you that are probably probably haven't heard or just probably haven't looked into it, EMX overdosed um, over the weekend. Mm-hmm. He's fighting. He's currently on life support. Yeah. Um, they're saying it's not a good state, but his manager about 17 minutes ago said that he still is alive. So praying out there for DMX that he can just come back because, you know, again, um, just, just wishing him a very speedy recovery. Yeah, for sure. Now, normally... Normally, of course, um, in sports, in this, this show particularly is about sports in, in general. Um, but as far as DMS is concerned, we do wish him well. Um, he is one of, if not the favorite rapper of mine that I've grew up with. Um, I know Zach Attack can kind of test to that and whatnot. You know, a lot of DMX music was rolling through our house. Good times when he started coming out. Um, he had a wonderful start up his career. It is sad to say that, you know, he did deal with um, drug addiction, of course. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he had good times when he would get off of it for a good while and try to make a comeback if needed. And then, you know, you, you have these issues. You have these demons and battles that DMX have been dealing with for the last, if not 30 years. So I think one, uh, as far as his career is concerned, he is, he is a great artist for sure, no doubt. Um, so for those DMX family members, we wish you guys well, hope that hopefully he gets better and, uh, you know, he can get some more lovely music coming out of him. So pass it on from there. Um, now, you, DMX. <clears throat> now let's get to it with the show. You guys, like I said, NFL news. Now, while we were gone, some crazy stuff happened. If not one of the craziest trades right before the draft hits, Sam Darnold is actually traded to the Carolina Panthers. Jets get 2021 six-round pick, 2022 six, uh, yeah, six-round, as well as fourth-round pick. So, um, or second-round, I'm sorry, six-round. <laughs> I apologize. 2022 uh, second-round and fourth-round pick. Um, I guess that I guess that's good on the Carolina side, but uh, for this particular trade, SG3, I'm going to pass it to you first. Uh, who wins? Who loses in this trade? Honestly, man, I feel that I feel that the loser in this one, believe it or not, it's not a team. It's Sam Darnold. Oh, okay. Main reason, take, main reason why is because I get it. You've been under Adam Gates for the past two years, and I get the fact that Adam Gates is not the greatest coach that anyone has ever had. Nope. I understand the fact that you know he. He missed uh, Thanksgiving dinner in order to prep for an O and eleven Cincinnati Bengals and lost. <laughs> I know his track record is not the greatest of all time, but at this point, though, I feel like Robert Sala is going to come in and actually do something good with this organization. Mm-hmm. I feel that he has the discipline in order to bring these boys, you know, to light. I just feel that though that unfortunately Sam Darnold has been so tainted because of Adam Gase that he's like, look, dude, I don't care what you bring to the table. 
Heck, you could bring me Randy Moss in his prime. You could bring me Calvin Johnson in his prime. Right. Heck, bring me bring back Walter Payton in his prime. I'm still not gonna stay. Yeah. Um. Who knew what? Who knows what it was? Because I mean, I just find it weird the fact that there was like this guy shows up. Everyone's really excited for him to show up. He's making a lot of good moves, bringing be, beefing up that defense, doing well. I mean, for goodness sakes, you have Le'Veon. I assume not Le'Veon Bell. Um, uh, who's a who's a running back right now? Uh, so it was not Le'Veon Bell. It w- well, it was nice Le'Veon Bell back. with the Jets for good, man. Yeah, but then they let him go. But they they just got a good running back though. They just picked up a good. They just picked up somebody good. Yeah, I'm gonna look at it while you're. Talking. I believe me when I tell they're, they're starting to beef up that team, and I feel like you know what. Unfortunately, though, when you're just when you're just tainted like with something like that, like yeah, man, it's 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 just crazy. But uh, I feel like he lost. I feel that at this point, though, the Jets are a winner. Here is why: because with what? them getting all these trades, yeah, man, with them getting these uh-huh. trades, with them getting these trades, it could actually work more for Salas, um, for his vision, for what he wants to do. And like I said, dude, look what he was doing. When he was with with. with San Francisco 49ers is the defensive coordinator. Uh-huh. The man was putting them on notice. A lot of people can sit here and say, dude, it was because of all the talent he had. Absolutely not. <laughs> Literally, if you think about it, he had an aging Sherman, but yeah, he still made Sherman relevant. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, yeah, of course, once you broke it to the inside, it was something different. But um, I feel that at this point, that actually has helped Salah. Um, at this point, though, I also feel that a winner, but also a loser at the same time, is the Carolina Panthers. Because the Carolina Panthers right now are not in a good position because you got a lot of people who are saying, yeah, Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater, you know, really showed you guys what he could do. Unfortunately, he had the injury that, you know, that hurt him. He lost Christian McCaffrey, so, you know, you guys you guys didn't give him a fair shake. Yeah. I completely get it, you guys. Um, this is this is not. Uh, I'm a Sam Darnold fan. I've never really seen a lot of his games. I've never really read up on a lot of his stats. From what I heard, though, the kid's got a golden arm. The kid can actually really dive bomb a pass. Mm-hmm. So heck, kid's younger. Yeah. I feel at this point he may not be the starter, but I feel that eventually, once he gets under Bridgewater's you know leadership, once he gets under Bridgewater's guidance, he could actually do something well. So I feel that it's a good thing for for Darnold to be under a vet. Mm-hmm. To guide him in, in the right path to actually be that, that that superstar quarterback that he's supposed to be. Okay, that's good. Now, Matt, as exactly, far as, you got anything to add to it? Well, I was gonna say when you were no, going to talk about the running backs real quick, uh, SG three, you had Tevin Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson, Josh Adams, and Peter Guerrero. If I'm not mistaken, you see, yeah, they, so, they just got they just got yeah, I told you, dude, they just signed a good running back, Tevin Coleman. If that man could stay healthy, okay, that was one of the main pieces of three headed monster for San Francisco. Gotcha, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Zach Attack, what do you think? Um, as far as winning and loses, um, in this trade deal, um, I, I kind of see it as a win, I don't know, win win, I guess, I mean. Uh, you guys really covered it though. I just see it as a win-win though in my eyes because I mean that's I think it's a I don't wouldn't say fair but it's I smarter. Not all trades are necessarily fair, but definitely smarter. So yeah, yeah. I think it's good overall. I'm I'm I do it. Is it, does it better their team? Don't do it, don't 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 do this with me, Macri. Exactly. <laughs> does it better their don't team? Do this with me. I hope. I hope, but hey, actions speak louder than words, man. We'll see. I guess you can say as far as the draft pick itself. I think for the next, with these picks, is what what are they going to test to tell on was the Sam Darnold trade worth it? I think in my perspective of the Sam Darnold trade, you kind of, you as a team, you needed to let him go. I think, yes, you were kind of already, you should have used him as like um, a big piece of your starting of your new team. But for for Sam Darnold, I don't think he was very happy while there. Um, I, you can kind of tell, especially being on the field. So it's like with with that being traded, I guess it, it's a win on Sam Darnold's side because now he's going to go somewhere else, another organization where not necessarily it's the best in Carolina, you could say, but at least you definitely got a solid running back in uh, in uh, McCaffrey. And you got some solid receivers at the moment. You got Adams. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Samuel Adams is on there. Uh uh-uh. Or Samuel something. Samuel something. Nah, dude. Nah, dude. Uh, Curtis Samuel went over to Washington. He oh. went to the Washington football team. Gotcha. Oh, I didn't know that. 
Yeah, dude, he won, he won about, what, two, three weeks ago? He won over. Gotcha. Uh, Gary Terry. Terry McLaren, dude. That man, he was happy. He was like, dude, we're basically talking when we've been preaching since college. Mm-hmm. You got Scary Terry and you got Curtis Samuel on the same squad. Man, that's, that's going to be a pretty scary wide receiver core. Gotcha. Okay. Now, as far as uh, as far as far speaking of Terry Bridge, Teddy Bridgewater, I'm sorry, I'm going to say Terry Bridgewater. <laughs> Teddy, um, what, do you think Carolina is going to keep him or they're going to trade him and use a valuable piece and get some picks off of him, SG3? I feel like, like I said, right now, if I was Carolina, I'd keep him at least for like a season or two more uh-huh. because this man has a lot of knowledge from so many teams that he's been on Agreed. that he can take take the knowledge he's got and, and use it for Sam Darnold because Sam Darnold is still fresh. You know, yeah. basically, like, <clears throat> I feel like he could be, like, not an elite quarterback, but he could be one of the good quarterbacks, one of the great quarterbacks. Kind of like a Phillip Rivers? So, bingo. Okay. Kind of like a Phillip Rivers. Um, kind of, you know what? I'm even going to say the name, and I, I, I mean, most people are probably going to be like, man, you're crazy. Because stat-wise, my man wasn't good. But <laughs> he he still took his team to, to, to the playoffs. Brett Favre. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm going to okay. say he could, even, yeah. he could even be like a Brett Favre. Sure. Because he's not a mobile quarterback, but he could, he could sling, and he, he could be smart when he needs to be. Right, exactly. And uh, what about you, Zach Attack? What do you think? Do you think Teddy's going to stick around Carolina or Carolina should actually ship him off and get some valuable pieces off of that guy? I would keep him if they can, but how much longer? That I don't know. I guess that's the question. But mm-hmm. I would keep him, I guess. he's. You'd say two years, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would keep him, though. Overall, if you ask the question, yeah, I would definitely keep him. I don't think he's like a disposable player. Definitely not for Carolina. I mean, they need him. They made some changes that I think they could still use him. I mean, to his best advantage. And I'm, I'm sure, to me, he looks comfortable there. So Yeah, we're good. Okay, moving along. NFL approves a 17-game schedule, you guys. Uh, Zach Attack, how does this impact our NFL teams? The teams? How does it impact the teams? How does it impact the teams? Um, I don't know. I think it's interesting because... Uh, I think the NFL looked at the NBA and they were like, well, if the NBA can make some adjustments, like as in restarting the season in a different time, mm-hmm. I think the NFL was like, we should switch it up and I guess they, they shortened games or they added 17 games? Added. They added, they added 17 games, yeah, right? Uh, preseason. So there's, so there's instead, of, instead, of, instead of it finishing at week 17, it's going to end now at week 18. Now, is that right, going to okay. be... So they're basically um, adding another Preseason wise, does that mean it's four preseason games or is it down to three now? Right, I, that one I don't know if it's. I, I haven't looked into that one so far, but what I know though, they're adding another game. Okay, so they're adding another week to it. So well, I guess I guess my thing is it's exciting, but um, maybe maybe we'll see them a little bit more tired maybe towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Because they had a longer season to play, so maybe we'll see a little bit of laziness, or maybe we'll see. Way more laziness in the beginning of this uh, the season, you know what I'm saying? Because maybe they're not taking it as serious. Yeah. Um, which I hope I, I hope to see no laziness. You know what I mean? But right. um, I mean that just lo- that just longer. And I think that um, you know with the NBA to go back to them real quick, like they had a lot of injuries, I think, and because of the whole switching of the starting. So I think that maybe that we could see a little bit more injuries injuries on the uh, NFL side on it too, maybe because the, the players are putting their body through a little bit more of a longer, you know, expansion of playing and stuff like that. So, I mean, I hope everybody the best players, you know. Um, I think it'll definitely be interesting. I think it's going to show some wear and tear on their body though, definitely. Good point, good point. Now, before I move on to USU 3, it is confirmed that as part of the addition to the 17-game uh, for the NFL season, they are going to reduce the preseason games instead of four down to three. So it's three preseason games and then adding that extra game to the actual NFL schedule. So that kind of answers our question on that one. So moving to USG3, what do you think as far as the impact on games? Is how, how bad is it going to in- impact them? I feel like the only one that benefits right now is just fantasy football fantasy football owners. Mm, fact, yeah. <laughs> that money, that's that I, I money hate to there. say it, I guess, as bogus as it sounds, but it True. really just benefits fantasy football owners because at this point, you're, as Macri Zachary just pointed out, you're now risking a lot of players to get hurt. 
Yeah. Uh, you're now resting players who are probably going to say screw it. Um, I mean, sometimes the only thing I could see, just like I saw with this season, is an additional playoff spot where it's like, you know what, man, it's so tight neck to neck. You know what could happen. Right. Um, I can guarantee you a lot of Arizona Cardinal fans out there were like, man, if it was us up against the Saints, we would have put up way more than nine points, unlike the Bears. Um, True. You know, if they would have. Again, <clears throat> also look at uh, – Look at the AFC, man. They're, I think also that's why the, that's why the NFL did it, and this is this is literally why the NFL did it because they opened up that seventh spot, but weren't expecting teams to be just back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. And then it's like, well, you now have to make another thing, you know, to in order to increase. So I feel that at that point, that's why they did it in order to just say like, this is this solidifies it, you know. Right. Um. So definitely see what happens there, but again. I just feel like it's just it's just it's just an injury zone waiting to happen. Yeah. I w- I yeah. hopefully hopefully though you know what it could be like Madden and no one gets injured and we just have a great fantastic <laughs> football season. It's football though and we know people are gonna get injured. Very true. Um. So I just feel that. Yeah. More than anything, it's just it's it's bad for the players, good for fantasy football owners. Sounds good. Okay. Now on to draft news. I know draft is coming up on April the 29th. Uh, I'm not too sure if. We have we're kind of you know close to there, but if is there any specific news, any kind of things going around there um, that you've heard of SG three or Zach attack? Well, first I'll go with you SG three. Any any news that the everyone's trading up? <laughs> you kind have, of that. Yeah, San yeah. Francisco San Francisco Forty Nine ers just uh, signed up to the third, I think, to the third spot. Um, Trevor Lawrence, Tre- Trevor Lawrence, kind of sunshine himself is not being Mr. Sunshine so much. He's actually saying, "I think I don't know, I don't know." I'm, I'm hearing the rumor where he is actually stating to his agent, "Dude, if the Jacksonville Jaguars draft me, I'm not playing for that team." Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, like, what exactly, like the the outcome of what's going on there. Don't understand, like, if he if he actually means it, because at first he was saying, "I don't want to go for the Jets," right. and then now it's like, "You're saying this." Naughty, like you're saying this, how close to the draft? Like, dude, like at that point, I feel like you're being a diva. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like honestly, dude, you're being you're being a diva. You know, cool. I get it. You have an impeccable record from from high school. Congratulations, buddy. So do a lot of other people. But guess what? Though this is the big leagues. Mm-hmm. You wanted to come into this. Welcome to it. You're not gonna win every game. You're not gonna have a a, a ten and seven season. Right you're not gonna that. have an eleven and six season all, all your all, for your whole career. Right. At this point, dude, take whatever you can on your rookie year, run with it, have a solid sophomore year, and then get traded. For goodness sakes, literally, just that's all you got to do. Carson Wentz did it. Freaking Mitch Trubisky kind of did it. Somewhat, some shit, some kind somehow, of. but he did it. Kind of. Yeah. Um, kind of. Look, look, look at look at all the players dude, that have literally have come into one that are started off in one team and they're no longer there. Right. Exactly. That's all I, I got to say. Freaking, so, freaking. If he, the freaking, what's his name? Dang, why did I just draw a blank on the uh, quarterback for the Bears? Where Sun. did he go? To the Dolphins, right? Yeah. No, uh, Trubisky. If he freaking. Did he go to the yeah, Dolphins? Yeah, Trubisky, Trubisky, nah, Trubisky went to he, Buffalo Bills. Bills, yeah, yeah, Bills. Buffalo, my bad. Buffalo. Still blue, still blue, still blue. But I was going to say, though, if he freaking turns up for the freaking Bills and freaking has one of his best careers, I'm literally, I'm done. I'm so freaking done. Just saying that for the record right now. Right? Uh, <laughs> Since you brought it up. Because, like, that's a good point, man. Like, every every quarterback has that one team they lead, and then they just have a career-breaking season, and I'll just be upset if that happens. Well, let's put it this way. When it comes, <laughs> I think when it comes to specific Chicago Bears players, when they somehow end up away from the Bears, they end up on a Super Bowl winning team. I think there was a testament you know what I'm to saying? Like, a lot of uh, uh, back then when that, when Tr- Tom Brady was gaining momentum and getting his Super Bowl rings, <laughs> you had a couple of linebackers that jumped from ship to Chicago straight to pa- Patriots. They won two <laughs> Super Bowls. Then you had Cedric Benson, who was really one of our main top picks that we wanted to get in the draft, and he was so highlighted, so praised when Chicago got him. And, and he went to Cincinnati. What did he do there? And, Nothing. Okay. Well, nah, well, he had a phenomenal. Well, I think about, he had phenomenal okay, two only, seasons. Only, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, Jefferson. Uh, what you gonna call it? The wide receiver. Remember when he left? He went to uh, where did he go to? Not the did he go to the Eagles? I think he went to the Eagles. Oh, Jeffrey. Yeah, you talking about Austin Jeffrey? Let me ask you a question. 
Yeah, Jeffrey, my bad, not Jefferson. Jeffrey. Let, let me ask you a question. What has he done? That, I also, give it to you. They, they won the Super, also, the year that they won the Super Bowl, what did he do? The main reason why they won the Super Bowl was because they had a phenomenal defense and they had a great running game. Two all all I got is all we're saying is that is somehow, some way, in shape or form, a, a Chicago Bears player left from Chicago and somehow got a ring. Not saying that they were the main reason why they won it, but they put themselves in a good position. Yeah, 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 definitely not saying so that. let's say, let's say for you, Sunshine, give your put that in your mindset. You do something well enough for a season. You go to another location. You may get a chance to win it. Our Chicago Bears players I, have somewhat showed that luck. I say luck. I'm gonna say luck because I'm not saying they were the main reason why a team won a Super Bowl, but it was a lucky a roll of the dice. You ended up with the team that won the Super Bowl. So as you do, go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm gonna, I'm gonna say one last thing. Luck, man. <clears throat> Sunshine gets drafted by the Jaguars. Instead of being a pretty pretentious diva that you want to be right now, literally, dude, accept it. The fact that you're already talking all this, a lot of NFL owners see it like, dude, you're you're just a headache. Uh, yeah. We already had a Brandon Marshall. We already had a, a Von Miller. We already had a a JJ Watt. We already had a Luke Kleekley. Like we have already had a lot of people do that. It's just a bunch. You know what? We already had a um. A guy from Miami, the middle line, Kiko Alonso. We already had a bunch True. of people come in and be headed. None of them, though, however, were a quarterback during, before even they got onto the field. Right. <laughs> Literally, you're the first person to sit here and say, I don't want to go to the Jets because they suck. I don't think I'm going to go to <laughs> Jacksonville because they suck. <laughs> my thing is, my dude, like I said before, and I'll tell you again, have yourself two phenomenal seasons on literally low class teams. Believe me, you keep your mouth shut. You just basically say, you know what, man, my guys went out there. We did the best we could. I did the best that I could. Right. Believe me when I tell you, you're going to get paid. Yeah. You're going to get paid. Yeah. You may be making the Patrick Mahomes kind of money. Stop. Right, Anthony? You're going to be making the, kind of the Patrick Mahomes kind of money? Uh, you know Patrick well, Mahomes, right? You know, the lucky money. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that <laughs> the, the, the money, monopoly the money. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. You go, you can go with that. Definitely money. Bro. So yeah, I say I, I I agree with you on that perspective. I think when it comes to these you draft players, though? you got to be careful and how much you speak up when it comes to before even going to the draft. <laughs> I'm gonna say one thing though. I feel that I don't think that Trevor Lawrence is gonna be the first quarterback to go. Uh, it's not looking like it. It's not looking like it. But we'll go. Go ahead. Who do no, you no, think? no, no, no. Let's put it. He would have kept his mouth shut. He wouldn't have said anything at all. He would just would have kept his mouth shut. Just let his numbers speak for themselves. Yeah. I yeah. honestly feel that like even even then, he still would not have been the number one quarterback to go. I feel the number one quarterback that's going to go is Justin Fields. Justin Fields? Oh. I don't know too Justin much about him. Justin Fields. The kid ran a 440, uh, a 40 yard dash in 444, 442. Oh. And that was a warm up, by the way. He was he wasn't even like full speed. He warmed up. Okay. Ouch. That'll be good. That'll be good. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, moving along from the draft news, we like I said, it comes up the 29th, so we'll be speaking up a little bit more about this, particularly. SGT, you got something? I got one last thing to say on NFL. Um, to you, uh, Tony the Kid. I know you're not a big fan of this story, but just wanted to kind of uh, say it. Two oh. women have actually been oh, fully fuck. identified in the, in the Deshaun Watson case. Oh, yeah. They've that... actually revealed their names, and they've said, you know what, this is what he did. Yeah. So you're now getting – it's it's basically like a cold rodeo because uh, last week when we were in here, you actually had a woman who came out and were positive towards him and said, you know what, man, he's one of the best clients I ever had. He was right. a fantastic client, right. you know, and they had names and everything. Right. But now from, like, the 19, so, 20 allegations against Watson, two of them have finally come on and said, look, this is our name, so, here's who we are. Yeah. So, to, so I mean, I'm going to leave this up to you guys, but to open it, to close that book, um, coming to the starting of the season, I mean, what happens? Do they let him start in the starting quarterback, or? I think, I don't think, I, you I don't think, does that, I, I don't uh, no. I, I don't think he is. With Nike, <laughs> with Nike, sure, already, you know. with Nike already dro- suspending the sponsorship, that should tell you a lot. Yeah. I think okay, Nike, yeah, I'm just making sure, you know, right. all, we heard, all we heard was that a trade is in the mist, and then we get these allegations. So it's like, is he going to, like, just, uh, does, does the NFL just drop him? Does he not even get, like, like I feel like this is kind of, this is going to be kind of like a, oh, sorry to say, but, um, 
what's his face? Ray Ray Lewis? Not Ray Lewis. Ray Ray Jump? No. Ray Ray. Ray Rice. Ray Rice. There you go. Ray Rice. Ray Rice. A kind of Ray Rice situation where the, they kind of have to lock him up for a quick minute. He's going to be on in, in definitely suspension for the time being. He's not going to be able to play at the moment right now until these allegations are taken okay. care of. I think the commissioner is definitely going to kind of step in and say his two cents about it for sure. So I wouldn't doubt we're going to be hearing some more words from the commissioner as far as pertaining to what's going to be okay. happening with the team itself and as far as what they want him just, to do. Yeah, because that was that was that was raising questions with me though, because I didn't want NFL to just be like, "Oh well, there's these allegations floating around," but uh, yeah, we got our starting quarterback. Like, what? Nah, yeah, man, no, I, they're, they're, they're gonna have to put a sure they, put I'm a sure timeout on them. There's a lot of protesting waiting to happen. Yeah, so right, right, exactly, <laughs> definitely. I I mean, at this point, at this point, the way I mean, we're it's still too early to say anything, man. We're still in, we're still barely in April. We yeah. just barely just started in April. The season right. starts in August. You know, full season starts yeah. in September, so we st- we're still four or five months away. Right. By then, something should start getting cleared up. Correct. Um, however, though, I feel that, and let's put it, if this, let's fast forward the time. Let's put this was like the summertime, yeah, August. Yeah, we'll I would literally be saying, I think this guy's going to be sitting at home. I don't think he's actually going to start anytime soon once mm-hmm. until everything gets cleared up. Um, but though, with the fact that these that these ladies are now starting to come out and say their name, personally to myself, I could I could say that it doesn't look good if women are actually starting to say, look, this is my name. This is who I am. Right. This is what he did. If you can, if you start getting, if they had, a, if they can at least get ten to fifteen, man, it doesn't look like a good day in court for Deshaun. Very true. Very true. All right, guys. Well, let's move it along. We got some crazy stuff happening in MMA. Next thing, next thing on the board. Now, uh, while we were gone, we heard Misha Tate is coming out of retirement to fight Marion. <laughs> Mar- Marion, I apologize. Marion. I don't know if that's right. Uh, Renu or Rene, Renu, Renau, uh, on July 17th. Now, first on the board, Zach Attack. Is it too late for her comeback? Yes. Is it too late? You yeah. know me, it's never too late, guys. No, um, I, I don't know, man. She's she's a little, I, is she fighting, who is she fighting again? Say again? Uh, Mer- if, uh, Mar- if I'm a, I'm, no, I'm killing her name, so I apologize. But Marianne Renu. Oh, 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 okay, I know what you're talking about. Um, no, it's not too late for a comeback, though. If she, uh, you gotta win, you gotta win, you gotta win. She has to win. Um, I don't know. It's been a long time, so like I said, it's. I mean, Nunez as as as, as the champ, champ. It was a while since she fought, but she came back and. Did a thing. I mean, this is not necessarily a champ champ, but she's definitely a badass. So, uh, is it too late? I, uh, I, I'm gonna go with no, it's not too late. She's got it. She can do, I don't know, like a, as far as a comeback, you mean just for the fight or like, is she? Well, <laughs> well let's put it this way. She's actually, she's putting her name in the mix of going for a title run again and trying to say she may oh. be back up going against Nunez. So that's what I mean. Is it too late? I mean, what as far as anything? Obviously, she has to win. There's no doubt in my mind. This is a must okay. win for her. But will it be too late? If, okay. Even if she does win, is it going to be late for an actual comeback for her? Uh, yeah. Then, yeah. Even if she does get this win, which I'm rooting for her. But uh, after that, I don't, I don't see a title in the mix of this comeback. I mm-hmm. don't. No. Nah. Gotcha. All righty, SG three. Same question. It's too late. <laughs> let's put it. She wins, and, let, and let's let's put right, it. Right. She wins. Let's put it. Nunez does give her does give her a fresh. Isn't this the same chick that got knocked like knocked into next week by Ronda by Ronda Rousey? Uh, submitted. She got submitted. Yeah. There, there was a there were some crazy battles there. I don't think she ever got. I don't know. Believe she got knocked out by. I know, I know she lost to Roger. Just can't, I know it was. I know she didn't go the full distance. So right. no, she got she got now, some, she got some, uh, submitted by Nunes. Yeah, yeah. No, no. no. no she got, didn't she get submitted by by, by Rousey? Submitted by Rousey and submitted yeah, by too. Nunes. She pretty much got submitted by. Oh yeah, both of them. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> both of them. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I stand. I stand by my point. It's too late. Stay home. You're done now. <laughs> we appreciate yeah. you going there. Trying to be nice too. Yeah. I was trying to be honest, but then I was like, nah, as a champ, then you're riding the champ. And then hey, you got to think, hey. man, she's got to fight against Nunez for the champ 
Nah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> that's but, a fight. It's not, you're not just trying to fight one person. You're trying to fight two people at your age and that long retired. Right. Nah, you're good. Yeah. Stay home. They might as well, at this point, they might as well put her in like a charity event like they did with uh, Tyson. Exhibition, Mike. <laughs> I, I kind of would say so too. I, an exhibition. Yo, exhibition. Yeah. Yeah, bring, back, bring back Ronda Rousey, bring back Cyborg, whatever, man, and just, just do something. <laughs> agree, agree. But at this point, don't know. Gotcha. All right. Other news. Crazy stuff has been happening ever since this whole heavyweight fight had ended with Francis Naganu and Stipe Miotic, if I'm saying the name correctly. Miotic, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Miotic. Okay, there you go. Tony the kid on the board. Yeah. Him books are working. Woo. He's now, <laughs> proud of him. <laughs> now, last discussion when we were talking about the heavyweight title was that John Jones was basically runner-up. Now, after the fight ended... There was a lot of bad tweets happening between John Jones and Dana White when he was on the press conference, being the post post uh, post fight conference, stating that you know he I don't know what I really don't know what Dana White had said, but you could kind of tell rub John Jones the wrong, wrong way. Now John went hit Twitter and started saying release me, all this type of drama, all this crazy stuff, all this diva stuff that he's been doing that I really hate about this guy. Um, will he fight in the UFC again? SG three. After this whole drama. Well, to correct you, when when Nagano won, he was the first one that tweeted to Dana. Uh, show me the money. Show me the money. Jones show was, me the money. He? Yep, okay. Yeah, Jones was. Yeah. So, my thing is like, all right, cool. I get the fact that you want to pay that. And you know what? I think that rubbed Dana the wrong way because he was like, dude, like, you have to understand, like, and again, this is not a knock on anybody. John Jones is John Jones. For goodness sakes, he's undefeated in the UFC for, you know, he hasn't lost there. I'm not, you know, aside from that um, that decision call. But at this point, though, my, my thing is this. He, for him to come out and say, show me the money, it's like, dude, you have to be at the level of a Conor McGregor. You have to be at the level of a Brock Lesnar. You have to be at the level of a Silva. Anderson is quite a Silva at that. You're not. But the money that they offered you, I feel like it's okay because it's your first heavyweight fight. And if anyone pays for you, it's probably, you know what? I would have said, you know what, man? Give me, give me my 8 to 10 million, but then give me some proceeds from the pay per view buys because I know you guys get a good chunk of them. Give me some proceeds, give me some ticket sales. I make a little bit more money, even if I come out to like 15 mil. But at the end of the day, though, I still got my money. Whatever happens in, in the octagon, no, hey, that happens in the octagon. I feel that at this point, the way Jones came out, he's sounding a little scared. I may be looking too much into it, but he looks like a guy that's sitting there like, yo, you pay me big money because I know I'm going to get knocked out by this guy because I had never taken a hit like that before. Oh, and and the guy who comes in with, with, with he, he's, he's got 19 stones, man. I, <laughs> so I feel it was that. A very, it was a very hard knockout to the champ. It definitely Straight was. Up. Yeah, but I agree. It was, it was nasty. So that's why I feel that I feel that that's why Jones is acting the way he's acting. He's like, dude, you want me to sign my death wish for this much? <laughs> like he's 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 trying to be the bot. He's trying to be the MMA Floyd Mayweather, dude. You're not at that level. <laughs> it's like a lot of people said, yeah, dude, you're John's Bones Jones. We get it, dude. But at the same time, though, can you literally sit there and say you can headline a UFC event without having to tie your name to somebody else? Right. I can Speaking guarantee of, uh, you, if, no, if ahead, you want to put ahead. like a Conor McGregor, if you put Conor McGregor and um, Dustin Poirier in the same event, mm-hmm. heck, even in the undercard, not even the main event, but the undercard of it, I can guarantee you it sells there. But if you put Nagano and Jones by themselves and just a bunch of just random kids who are just trying to become like a heavyweight champ or whatever, I don't think that card's going to sell. Yeah. So that's why I feel like Dana said, look, dude, I'll just pay you 8 to 10 mil. Okay. Uh, Zach, 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 Zachary Macri. Uh, yeah. To close on your uh, point with the Connor thing, though, because that's where I was going with it, is uh, is his next one of his next tweets that night was uh, like he was complaining about how Connor gets a certain amount of money just for a fight, and uh, and he feels like he's being under undermined or under you know appreciated, you know. And I thought I, I took that tweet to heart because I was like, why is he like to your issue? Like, why would you put? Why would you try to bring someone else's name into it when this is your fight? You know, it's Connor's not going to be in your corner. 
or the other octagon fighting with you. So, and that he's not going to get no sense of that money, you know. So, I don't, that was kind of a punk move. Um, but I guess he wants money, right? You know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't, I, that's, but to, back to back. Oh, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. No, no, I just heard, just what I was going to say, just adding to my point. That's why I like, dude, you want to get money? Cool. I'll take yeah. your 10 million, but for your 10 million, though, no, I want 20 proceeds of the pay per view buys, 25% of the tickets. And then whatever else from sponsorship, give me ten percent of that. You at least get fifteen to twenty five million. Cool, I'm good. And if I win, I want I want X amount. If I lose, I get X amount. If I win, I get X amount. Yeah, Done. true. Now to now to answer your question, is Jones gonna fight an octagon again? Mm-hmm. I would imagine so. Um, I, now how that process is gonna happen, I don't know. Um, even even if he does fight again, though, I'm gonna be honest, guys. I don't know if he's gonna win, man. Francis Francis shocked me in that fight, and I wouldn't be surprised if he shocked me again in Jones' fight. So, and you know, once you once you become a title, a new title defender, you know, you get a little chip on your shoulder, you know. So, I don't know, man. That would be interesting. And Jones would be going into a heavyweight new division. We just saw what happened to the style vendor. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The heavyweights could be on a roll. This, you know, this twenty twenty one. So I, I, I guess, I guess I wanted to fight in the octagon again. That would be dope to see Jones in there. Right. Um, is he being kind of a, I don't know, a douche? I guess or an asshole about the money. I mean, yes and no. Um, I don't know. Yes and no. I mean, like you know, pay the man. Obviously, you know, he is a champ. Pay the man. Um, I don't. That's I don't know. I'm not. I'm not the way you guys know me. I don't, that's my favorite line. I'm not this person. I'm not. <laughs> but uh, right, right. I just, yes, I would. I want to see him fight again. Now, Tony, how do you feel, man? <laughs> Well, I'm gonna kind of do a little <laughs> spiel. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm gonna do a little sp- for real. I'm gonna do a spiel with this guy because <laughs> if any fighter in the world pisses me off the most, it literally is John Jones. Mayweather is second up there, and that's only because of his his mannerism, his chit chat, or whatever Mayweather did in the boxing ring. That's what irritated me the most. But all in all, I give Mayweather all props due. The issue I have with Jones of me. Being, him frustrating me the most as a fighter is that you have the audacity to be flipping out and tripping out to an organization that's stuck by you through all your bull crap. Yeah. All your yeah. bull crap. Your hit and run, your drug yeah. abuse, say like all that bullshit that you compromise all this, th- their money, their company's money, these other fighters' money, people's other money, people's views and stuff like that. You put all that stuff in jeopardy all because you were selfish now give understanding you had your demons or whatever then seek help as an organization this organization if knew for a fact if you were asking for help they would have went out their way to help you because Dana White has said from time to time again if he was clean and if he was actually you know focused like an Addison Silver he would have been by far so the best fighter in, ever in the world to ever lift. And I'm going to say test to that because of what what he was as a – he was like a Play-Doh. He was very like – you can mold – he was ready to mold into this beautiful freaking fighter and be one of – if not the GOAT, if not the GOAT, okay? But yet you just time and time again, you fuck things up for yourself and for this company – and now you want to sit there and try to hold ransom and say, pay me the money, all because you're the one that wants to move up. You're the one that wants to fight. Yeah. You're the one that wants money, all that type of stuff like that. And yet you're trying to put them on blast and say, release me. Fine. If you get released, good luck to a company who will sit there and put up with your bull crap like UFC did. That's, all, like, that's my thing with this bull crap right here with John Jones. It just doesn't make any sense for me for how this fighter can keep on and keep on being such a dumbass diva, period. Like, it doesn't make any sense at all. It pisses me off with that crap. He annoys the bejesus out of me. Like, he has potential. Like, it does, like even his family members aren't like that. Chandler Jones isn't like that in the NFL. So why the hell is he, like, he's, you can tell he's the baby of the group because the baby is such a fucking diva. 
of all of anything. So fuck that guy. So he can go. He, he can go kiss so somebody's ass. Quick, though, it's clear to say. It's clear to say if the match does go down, you got Francis, right? I'll say it again. <laughs> Yo, yes, yes, clear to say. No lie. If Fran- if they were to step inside the octagon, Francis is gonna. He's gonna literally pull the freaking head off of John Jones and just feed it to him. So yeah, yeah, it's done. Like there's no right, way. Right gotcha. There's no way John Jones was gonna survive a punch from Francis at all whatsoever. If he would have got punched with one of Francis and got his punch, he would have been out, out cold, out cold, days looking up in the ceiling, plain and simple. So, yeah, he can, he can die. I don't really care. He can die. All right, put that out there. Put that bad juju. But uh, as far as as far as pertaining to the next question to this, if John does not return. Uh, will Derek Lewis be next? Uh, Zach Attack, do you yes. think he's runner up? Sorry. Eric Lewis to fight Francis? Yeah. If, John, if the whole John yeah. Jones fight yeah. doesn't go through. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Definitely? Very that, good. that would be, yeah, that'd be a good fight. That would definitely be. That'd be yeah, a smart move, be, I, I think, I, for the cup. Yeah. I think that's a smart move just because of what Derek is. So, yeah, I agree with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be either way. I, I mean, oh. it's not obviously not going to be as anticipated, but it'll definitely be good though. Yeah. Go ahead, SG3. Big money. I, yeah. <clears throat> At this point, man, it's it's it's. I think I think it's already in the cards. <laughs> it's just not in the right. You know, I feel like Dana White has it, like I, you know. <laughs> right. Honestly, because he because Francis said, "Dude, if you don't get him, get him." Yeah. Like I I want I want him. Yeah. If you don't get him, get him. Yeah, true. Dude, That's what he, saying, Francis the fact that the champion said, if he doesn't show up, get him. Yeah. Like, I'm a fighting yeah. champion. I want to fight. So yeah. that's why it's, it's already in the cards. Right. Yeah, very good. Now, we don't have to go into depth in this one, per se, but this is just an out there statement for the fans. As you guys have already known, <sighs> when it comes to the McGregor and Poirier, Poirier fight, um, it is official. They are going for, uh, for a third fight with each other, setting up for... July the 10th at UFC 264, so be on the lookout for that. I don't want to get too much into details with that with you guys because I'm sure we're going to be talking about that fight right before. we got plenty of time, so all it is is just spreading, spreading out news to you guys to let you guys know, but we will be for sure looking into that um, to that fight, particularly and getting our little two cents on that results. So, good luck. Oh, the kid goes for Conor McGregor. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Now, move along, keep it on the fighting stuff like that. we got boxing news happening. Anderson Silva versus Julio. I don't even want to say Cesar Chavez because it doesn't represent Cesar Chavez. I'm going to say Julio Chavez Jr. Uh, boxing match <laughs> is set for June 19th. Now, SG3, will we continue to see MMA fighters fighting the boxing matches now that this is happening? I mean, this was kind of a big sort of shock on me for uh, Anderson Silva I- announcing he's going to be in a boxing match. So, do you think it's going to keep continuing to see MMA fighters go that route? I see it because at this point they're still getting paid. <laughs> yeah. And I feel that it's going if you think about it though, it's going with fighters who are one who are starting to become like one more dimensional because the legs are not doing the same as they used to <clears> with the kicks. Right. Um Silver versus leg injury, he's like literally diminished his leg usage about maybe ten, fifteen, twenty percent. He's not the same anymore. Yeah. So he's been trying to adapt more of that boxing style. Gotcha. Um this, however, though, looks more bad on Chavez. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, regard. It's like, it's like, okay, it's like. Let's put it for example: the the the, the, the boxer, the Jake Paul, Logan Paul. Who's fighting? Uh, coming up on Jake that's Paul, right? gonna be our next on the conversation. But Jake Paul, yes. Yeah. Okay. Him. He beats. You know. He, <laughs> let's put it. He beat. He beats Ben Askren. Congratulations. You beat a retired MMA fighter. When are you actually gonna fight a boxer? It's the same thing for Chavez, dude. It's a lose lose situation. Like you assign yourself up for a lose lose situation. Mm-hmm. Like just because you win this fight, it's not gonna sky like it's not gonna skyrocket your career, and everyone's gonna sit here. Oh, he's back. He's doing what he was doing before. No, no, that's exactly no. what's you gonna happen. This, and no, you no, no, fight, no, no, no. I'm sure you how to say, dude. You fought a retired MMA fighter. If you lose this fight, dude, you fought a retired MMA fighter. Exactly. Not exactly. much change, though. <laughs> regardless of what, regardless of, of the argument you try to give me, you fought a retired <laughs> MMA fighter. Yep, it, it's a bad call. Yep. Zachary Macri, just just finish it off, man, because I'm done. I have yeah. nothing else to say to that. So, well, so like, you said it's so, Jones and who? 
Well, yeah, so the oh, co- so the question it's was Chavez versus Anderson Silva. Yeah, no, Anderson Silva fight. versus Chavez, Chavez Julio. See, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say Chavez Junior. That's I'm not gonna say the full name because, no, honestly, in my perspective, Rook, before I pass it on to you, Julio Junior does not represent that name. Julio Cesar Chavez was a phenomenal name in the Mexican culture, especially in fighting. It, it's an icon name, and for the simple fact of Julio effing that up. Just because of his dumb decisions and his his lack of driven drive to try to be a boxer and just only doing it for the money because of his name is what ticks me off of that guy. So I don't want to say he represents that name per se itself. So, yes. I'm, I'm going to just say one thing. I saw him live in 2007 before he like really, really catapulted and really, really grew. I saw him live and, and producer, director, Lisper... Uh, him, cause whatever he wants to call himself nowadays, uh, RJ. He was with me, <laughs> and he was he was hyping him up. He was saying, "Dude, this guy is like his father. This guy is undefeated like his father. This guy is this and that." I watched him fight, and I told him, "Oh my, look, dude, I'm gonna tell you one thing right now. I'm like, <laughs> here's one thing you're probably not looking at because you got love for the name. And, hey, man, I get it. I, right. I honestly, I get it. But I'm looking at this as a fan, as a boxing fan." The guy sucks. Yeah. The guy is one dimensional. The guy is slow, is flat footed, and the guy on top of the only for one punch. He's six two to six five, I believe. Maybe six six if I'm if I'm you know pretty big. like stretching yeah. it out. Pretty big guy. He was fighting a guy that was like maybe six foot at most. And the guy was giving him trouble. And I told him on my like, look, dude. And then, you know, he went on a whole rant. He was like, dude, you, you just don't give Mexican fighters the, the, the credit that they deserve. I looked at him and I told him, look, dude, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You go ahead and tell me that I don't give them credit. You can go ahead and tell me, sit here and tell me the fact that just because my, my favorite boxer is Manny Pacquiao <laughs> and because whatever. Go ahead, man. It's all good. But I can guarantee okay. you one thing. The moment that this kid has to fight somebody who knows what they're doing in the ring and who and actually that has that boxing IQ, they're going to school the living heck out of him. Mm-hmm. And the first thing you're going to say is, Man, I, I knew that was going to happen. Nah, dude, you never knew it because the first thing you told me, like everyone else told me, Chavez Jr. is like his father. Absolutely not. He's yeah. slow-footed, he's slow, he's one-dimensional, and he only looks for that one punch because that's all he's got. Yep. At this point, so if Silver knows how to counter his whole style, it's going to be a long night again for Chavez. Yeah. I agree. Zachary, Zachary, go ahead. So, yeah, Zach, ahead it's, uh, right? it's Anderson Silva versus Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in the boxing match on June 19th. Now, what I ask, particularly to the question itself, are we going to be continuing to see MMA fighters heading towards boxing matches after, or even at that, maybe some fighters are still in their prime going towards this and trying to get these little exhibition matches? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think we'll see more UFC fighters in that. Is it smart and is it fair? No, but yeah, I can see it definitely. Okay. Um, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, I want to see like it'd be dope to see like a like a off the top of my head like a GSP or or a God, I don't know chocolate. No, Chuck's a little old. I was gonna say Chuck Liddell, but I don't know. Maybe <laughs> you might. You might. You never know, know, man. Somebody, you you know, might go somebody. to the Legends League. You might yeah, go. I mean, I go. You never know. So That's yeah, true. I think it's interesting though. I'm I'm with it. I think that yeah, like it sucks. The my only thing is it sucks that it's just boxing though, because I mean they're obviously trained in it. But uh, I guess it's fun, you know. I still like to see like a UFC exhibition fun thing. Like, that'd be cool. But yeah. I guess that's still pretty bloody. So I don't know. Boxing is too though. So, I'm, I'm gonna just say two things. To this. Just say two things yeah. to this. Uh, there you go. Anderson Silva said, "I'm open to more boxing fights after the Chavez fight because I love the sport." That's number one. Number two, though, anyone notice the fact that Silva is the A side in this card and not Chavez? That's true. That's kind of weird and ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> that. So any, anyone notice the fact that the yep. non-boxer yep. is the A side? Yeah, that that is a testament. It's that's what I'm saying. They're training, though. That's why I think it's not fair. Like low key, like. But it's a, it's, it's a disgrace. Like, it's it, really a, yeah. a disgrace to it's a Chavez Junior. Just because of the fact that it like like really you're. The MMA fighter coming in and doing a boxing exhibition fight is the A-side. And Chavez, who is established boxer in people's eyes, and he was a former champion, yeah. uh, be a B-side, which is ridiculous, when it should be the opposite at the moment. Because it, 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 it would be a totally different table if, let's say, Chavez was going to MMA. Wouldn't you think 
Anderson be the A-side? Yes, because he's going into MMA. So how could it be where an MMA fighter going into boxing still be an A-side? Like, that's ridiculous. Not even McGregor was the A-side when it came to that. He was he was still A-B. You know what I mean? Like, it was ridiculous to that. So, yeah, that's just a testament to how bad this is for, for Chavez Jr. in this predicament. But, uh... Yeah. So that's like I said. You win, you lose. You lose, you lose. <laughs> right, exactly. So, true. So, yeah, true. moving along with that, we'll kind of continue with that since June 19th. It will be coming up very soon, and we'll kind of get more de- in-depth on who will win and all that good stuff. So, uh, moving on to Jake Paul and Ben Askren, April 17th, coming up next week, of course, you guys. Who will win? Zach Attack? I got my money on Ben. <laughs> ben has to win for the UFC world, man. Sick of these small guys. I'm not sick of them. I don't hate them, hate them, but yeah. I'm just dumb. They're, I don't like them. I don't like their, but I don't like what they stand for. You like okay? the balls? I like them. They're not boxers. They're not professional, nothing. They're not athletes. They're YouTubers. Just stay in the YouTube lane. Who failed? You're there. Who failed? That's what they are. They're YouTubers that failed and they don't know what to do with their lives. That's yeah, honestly, like, honestly, like, I'll, I'll even defend them in that sense. I don't even think they failed in the YouTube game. They can just stay in the YouTube lane as failures in the YouTube lane. <laughs> My thing is, don't try to jump into the boxing world and then the UFC and calling out these big time namers. I hope Ben puts him on his ass, even though Ben has been put on his ass in the UFC world. But. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I I do hope that, you know, he's got to do something, man. I mean, he's been in Bellator and UFC, and he's going to try boxing, so he's got to, man. I mean, I got, yeah, yeah, I, come on, Ben, come on, man, put this guy on his ass in front of the world, please. Yeah. We can't, we can't let both the brothers win on a charity event. Some dog's going to go crazy, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, SC3, who the you got with? That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Illuminati, bro. Stay woke. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, SC3. <laughs> Man, uh, I'm sorry. I'm saying this to you. I, I, I get it, dude. I, I have I have a dislike for them as well because he claims to be a boxer, but you beat a retired NBA a retired NBA boxer who – excuse me, a retired NBA, NBA basketball player who's – what, six, seven inches sh- shorter than you, number one, mm-hmm. and now you're going against a retired MMA fighter. Yep. You're not a boxer, dude. I didn't even know you're Ben retired. not a boxer. Yeah, dude, Ben retired. Ben retired like a, a month or two months after. Um, <laughs> after the... Think, after, he got knocked out? He needs to then? No, yeah. no. He, he lost. I think he lost another fight after the, after the Masvidal fight. Yeah. I think he lost one more fight. Then he retired. No, oh, well, okay, okay. Ben so, actually, okay. Ben he never stepped foot octagon, back in the octagon there. after the the Jorge fight, but he did end up wrestling uh, uh, an Olympic wrestler at the moment. I can't remember his name. I got, I'm actually following him a lot, uh, but he he did do a wrestling match and he lost that too as well. That was an exhibition wrestling match, but he, when he lost that one, that was when he said, Psh, "I'm done." Forget about it, you know, and stuff like that, and moved on. Oh, so, shit, but, Ben. Oh, man, Ben, yeah. you're, that's not a good way to retire. <laughs> so, it's just I, I mean, I mean, if, if you ever think about it, though, whenever people, for right now, when people bring up the fastest knockout, you're always going to think Ben Askren. Yeah. Uh, yeah, top five. Sure. At least at this point, it's your right now. That's the fastest knockout <laughs> in UFC history. That's, I, I oh, yeah, that's yeah. the fastest. Yeah. Whenever you think of fast and knock on your face, if UFC history, if you don't remember Jorge Masvidal, you'll always remember Ben Askren because that man was, was as stiff as a board. So number one. Number two. Um, again, no. It, it, it's just, it's bad. Um, I think I think Ben's going to lose. I think, I think you know what? Believe it or not, I think he's going to get put to sleep. You think Ben will get put to sleep? I think Ben's going to get put to sleep, and that's when Jake Paul's going to sit here. I can fight a Canelo. I can fight a Charlo. I can fight a uh, Benavides. And then he's going to go into the ring with some of these bigger guys in the, in the boxing world. Oh, and believe me, that's what the boxing world is. He's going to call out Triple G out of fucking retirement. Uh, he'll probably call out um, Bernard Hopkins. Oh. <laughs> just ra- just random nuts. names. I swear yeah. they this, bro. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, he'll go. I think he'll throw some names out there. I mean, that's kind of why I thought so when he won his last fight against Nate. Like, why do I feel like if he would have won that fight against Nate, that boy, knowing social media, he's going to start putting big names out there and start saying stuff like that. So it makes sense. So I'm like, this guy's going to do... You're trying to fight Conor McGregor. Stop it. You're not a boxer. 
Yeah, I, I would. Come no on, lie, bro. no lie. Even if they do put Connor in there, Connor's gonna. I kind of gonna blast him. Like even Connor's Bro, not really a really boxing fighter. Mop he the will. He will ring murder with him. that guy's face. Yes, he won't last. So Man. it is what it is. I think, in my perspective, I think uh, I, I agree with you guys. I think Jake. Well, uh, as far as issue three, I'm gonna agree with you on that one. I think Jake's gonna take the win on this one. Like it doesn't make any sense why you would fight a wrestler. Or he's Ben is a, a, a bread and buttered wrestler. He's nowhere near used to throwing punches. Yes, he's a success, somewhat successful MMA fighter, but that's only because he was able to grab him, take him down, submit him, plain and simple. There was no hands. As soon as a fight went to hands, Ben lost. So it just doesn't make any sense for him to go in the boxing ring and say, I'm going to be successful. No way. Sorry. So Jake, Actually, I, yeah, it does. It does make sense. He's going to lose. He's going to lose. Imagine, imagine how much of a painting he's getting because of this. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's just... Whatever. He's That's why it makes sense. It's for charity. It's for charity. It, it, it makes sense. For charity. Do- dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not even. <laughs> That's true. For the Ben Askren charity, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> now, speaking of exhibition fights, we got another one that was announced as a fan favorite, I believe. Of course, well, I believe for myself. But I think this one, this is going to be a nice fight. This is a real good exhibition fight. Uh, Miguel Cotto versus Juan Marquez. Manuel Marquez, if I'm not mistaken. Is being eyed. Now, it's not really somewhat official just yet. They're really getting to that point of meetings and contracts, but it's in the mix, and I think everyone is on board to this fight particularly. It's being eyed wow. for June 12th in Miami, Florida. That's one thing they want to do, and they want to have a full audience by that in order to get this fight going. So hopefully these meetings can keep going on. It's still ongoing fight at the moment right now, so I would say let's kind of... We're going to keep following up with that until it's actually official. People are signing the contracts and all that good stuff like that. Um, but it is a must, if I'm not mistaken, for sure. Um, in my perspective, no, yeah, Jack, actually, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Really, really, I'm sorry to interrupt I think, you. I think you're lying. Um, but honestly, no, it is a confirmed fight. It no. is confirmed they're going to fight. No, it isn't. No, yeah, it's already confirmed. Uh, Marquez is starting to train for it. Uh, both Nacho and Freddie Roach have confirmed the fight, and they're ready for the fight. So the fight is going to happen. Oh, that's good. That's well, good that's news. the thing. I don't think the contracts were signed yet because that's what they've been saying that that's what they want. They're still having the meetings because they're – let's see. Miguel gains excitement. That's the main top of the news as far as what they're doing. They're it's- training. They're gaining momentum, but the, no one has officially signed an actual contract at the moment right now. So I mean, I agree with you. At this point, the, from, it from, looks from like the it. way they're talking, you can already consider yeah, you consider it signed. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, no lie, I, no lie. On both ends, they want to sign this contract. I think is what it is. Is that let's get that. I want that official. Oh, up here signing my contract. I'm gonna get the big bucks for this exhibition. But it, let's put it honest. June 12th in Miami, Florida, knowing Miami is at full capacity of letting fans in the stadium. Without any restrictions, I think that's going to be badass. I think it's going to be an awesome fight for that. Um, I can guarantee one thing: <clears throat> it's going to be a pro. It's going to be a pro quarter crowd. Mm-hmm. Mexican, you're not going to hear the Mexicans that day. That day, you're going to hear the Puerto Ricans go loud and go crazy. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's going to be a uh, fan favorite uh, on that fight. Uh, who do you got? Who could actually? Wait, how good? Oh, I'm sorry, not that wasn't my main question. But how good could this fight be, SU three, in this perspective? If Cotto is bull Cotto with that left, with that left hook to the body that he used to be, man, that's gonna be a good fight. That's gonna be a really good fight to fight, man. I just watch. I just, I mean, I'm looking at it like even past your prime. Because Marquez, he he is probably the smartest fighter I have ever seen because he constantly thinks. And you see him thinking as he fights. Like, he's adjusting in in the fight himself. He keeps just adjusting and everything. <clears throat> so, you know, again, at this point, it, it's it's too close. I can't tell you who's going to win. I can't yeah. really predict it. Maybe once I start watching a little bit more of the training camps, so I could probably get a, like, a nice little gauge. Yeah. But, man, it, it's it's going to be a good fight. Yeah. Regardless of what people say, regardless of age, regardless of anything, it's going to be a really good fight, guys. I think so. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Uh, Zach Attack, what do you think? Who, who, how good could this actual fight be? Or even at that, how, who do you got in general? 
I think it's going to be a good fight. I think it'll be definitely anticipated. Um, if it's finalized, as of for sure, that's what you just read, right? Yep. Or, or no, you're waiting, we're waiting on a finalization. So, I mean, I'm with it. It's, it'll be a good fight. Um, I'm, I'm ready for it. I don't want to really, I don't want to pick a winner yet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't that's fine. Know. If you don't want to pick a winner, that's okay. If you want to pick a winner, how as far as how good this fight could be, because I, I think for us too as well, we want to see the training caps. We kind of want to see what where they are, <laughs> body yeah. wise, mental. We kind of want to hear of anything like that. So how like as far as this fight, the potential of this fight itself, where where do you see it? Then yeah, then yeah, I'm definitely I'm I'm, I'm excited. I I definitely yeah. I would I wish I could attend it. Honestly, it'll be a good fight. Definitely will be. I think it'll go. You know, obviously, if the exhibitions are the same rules as the Jones and, uh, um, what's his name? I, cool. I think that's what they're trying to figure out is the, is the rules for the, for this exhibition. Yeah. Yeah, like eight, eight rounds. I think they did it last time. And, like, uh, I think there was no knockouts, right? But uh, if you get knocked, oh, yeah. Well, what's his name got knocked out? So, <laughs> there's only knockouts. But yeah. I think it's like, you know, exhibition for fun, though. So, Right. I mean, hey, yeah, I can see a knockout between those two. Hell yeah, I can definitely see a knockout. <laughs> if they go eight rounds, that'll be nice. That'll be good. Yeah, I think uh, I-, I can see it being a high potential fight. I think this is really a, a exciting exhibition fight per se. With, with all these exhibition fights happening and going out there in the name cards, this is an exciting one just because of the fact that these fighters are not necessarily really past their, you know, past that point where. They're old, like a Tyson type of thing like that in the Holyfield. They're right there, right before it gets to that stage. And yet, they're still in the functions of knowing knowing their moves and knowing how to throw their punches and having those reflexes still mentally in their brain. And I feel like the fact that they're both at that stage, not necessarily one's more than the other, and with these fighters itself have always been somewhat, uh, uh, in, their, in their careers, have always been somewhat type of, uh, let's say, uh, how do you want to put it out there like that? Like a brawler in a perspective way. And it, it makes sense. It just makes sense for these two fighters. It's an actual exciting fight just because I like Kodo. I actually like what he did in the ring. I think he was a fin- like a, a great fighter at that. He was really good. The same, same well as Marquez. I think Marquez you know, stood his ground in what he was as a fighter. So the fact that these two are going head-to-head is actually a really cool mix into it. Knowing that is Mexican. Versus Puerto Rican, so it keeps that it keeps that fire, it keeps that <laughs> momentum brewing up there. You know that rival between us Hispanics, so it gets in there. So I, I think that's going to be what's mm-hmm. going to be driven in this. So it's me cool. So moving along from fighting, you guys, we're going to go jump into NBA. Okay, now it's not necessarily going to jump into what's been happening in NBA at the moment right now. I want to get off of that real quick, and I kind of want it and go about this a little differently. Playoffs is somewhat around the corner. It's looking more and more towards what these actual standings are going at at the moment right now. As far as what I want to ask you guys, pretender or contender when it comes to these teams. The top five teams on each division right now, I'm going to ask you guys. Okay? One by one. In the Eastern, we got the 76ers already on top. We got the Nets, Bucks, Hawks, and Hornets. Now... Out of those, who do you guys think is a pretender? Who do you think is an actual cut tender for the conference? Zach Attack, I'll start with you. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Let yeah. me hold on. Let me look at this list you just pulled up because you just put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me so, make yes. sure I got the list in front of me. Because that's a pretty good question. So yeah. let me see, hold on, where the standings are. <clears throat> you said you're talking about the Western? Uh, Eastern. Eastern Conference right now? Yep. Let's see here. I know that the uh, what you call it the what the Suns are on top. No, mm-hmm. the Suns are third. Yes. Let me see. No, yeah, the yeah, Nets. The home. Nets now are back. The I Nets. Talking about the Eastern Conference. Yeah, Eastern. Yeah, you have the go. Nets. Okay. Now you have the Nets on top. You got the 76ers down to second. Okay. You got the Bucks in third. You got the fourth. Okay. Hornets, and you got the fifth Hawks. Now it kind of fluctuated because when I wrote this, it, it was just yesterday. So it's moving. It's moving yeah. up there. So what yeah. do we think? Um, you said no. You said the question was who's going to be a number one contender. No, no, no. Who's a pretender? Who's a cut tender? Who, as far as these teams, yes, they're in the top five. But honestly, in all in the big picture and big scheme of things, who's actually going to contend for going towards the title? 
substituting their best players every, out every now and then. Um, <laughs> so with that being said, Durant is back. We got a healthy Durant and a healthy Kyrie Irving. So, I, I mean, out of the Eastern Conference, I would have to say that the Nets are definitely going to be a cut tender. Okay. They're definitely going to... Uh, I would say it's early to go straight to the playoffs, but they're definitely going to be definitely in the running, man. Definitely. James Harden's coming back. He's not out for the season. So, out of the Eastern, I'm going to go with the Nets. As far as not going anywhere, I'm going to say... The Hornets. I don't, ee, that's tough because the Hornets and the Hawks are interestingly good and bad, and they both honestly shouldn't even be there in like a good way. Like I'm happy they're there. So no, that's fine. I mean, that's that's, that's, that's point. To, I, just put, I just have to put money on the Hornets not going anywhere. I think they're gonna drop out a little bit, man. Ball is very functional rookie for them. So yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's that question. Very good. SG3, same thing. Who's a contender? Who's a pretender in this top five in the Eastern right now? Contender. The Brooklyn Nets. Let let, let Harden come in. Let them all three yeah. be healthy. Yeah. 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 Along with along with Blake and with the other guy they picked up. Good luck. <laughs> Man. Ouch. Scary sight. Good luck. Good luck. Number one, yeah. number two. Yep. Pretender. Believe it or not, man. Actually, you know what? I'm going to name another contender. Okay. Philadelphia <laughs> 76ers. Six. Okay. Top two. Because if you think about it, even with their main star out, they were still winning games. Yeah. Wait, are you talking about the Sixers? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's well, still a lot. Uh, there's still, there's still some games. There's still games no, going no. forward. There's still no, games going though. forward. I'm saying though, even when the beat wasn't there, okay, yeah. To you, to to you, was that attack? They're yeah, not the they're exactly. not the Los Angeles Lakers that dropped from second to fifth. Ah. <laughs> okay. Got good news on that too. You don't Lakers just got Lakers. Yeah, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> continue on that. <laughs> the Lakers had another superstar in order to make themselves relevant again. Okay, perfect. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> All right. And you got a pre got a pretender, SG three? Yeah. The Charlotte Hornets. For this season, I know a lot of people are not gonna like me for what I'm gonna say. I know they're not even in top five, but the Chicago Bulls from are a pretender this season. The Chicago oh, Bulls are ouch. pretenders? Okay. Kick kick them while they're down, why don't you? <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. They're 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 still within the top ten and they're only one game behind Indiana. They've destroyed today the, the, the Raptors. Cool. You yeah, they doing did. something. But for all the hype you did for getting the one superstar, I feel like they're going to be like within the bottom 10 again. Yeah. In the bottom five. And then they're going to blow out in the first round. Very they'll good. be lucky if they even get past this. They'll be, they'll be lucky to make it to the second round. That's gotcha. me, though. Gotcha. All right, now. Go same thing going on for the pretender, cut tender discussion here. Uh, on the Western Conference, we got the Jazz on, sitting on top. We got the Suns at second. We got the Clips at third. Nuggets at fourth, and the Lakers, like you said, at fifth. Now, going on with that, Zach Attack, your pretender, your cut tender for this top five in this moment right now. Who, who do you got? Um, I'll start with my pretender, the Clippers, man. The Clippers are not – I don't think they got it this season. Wow. Now, they did good. look good. They had a game – they played against, actually, the Suns. And that was a really good game today. Um, and the Suns lost. The Clippers did win. But I just, my thing is Paul George and Kawhi are not connecting. And they just added a couple of really good players that I think they have to hold together. Yep. If they can close it strong, I mean, hey, kudos to them. But uh, are they going to have to go in that pretender category? Because I, those five teams that you named, I'm not looking at. They are just, I don't, I can't, something's not rocking with me there. You, 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 nah. forgot, you forgot the fifth team. Come on, give me that number five. Come on, give me that number five. <laughs> <laughs> like five Let me tell you why. I'm going to do the same thing as you did. I got two contenders, bro, because you can't sleep on Jazz, first of all. I'm just going to put that out there. You cannot sleep on Utah Jazz, bro. Right. My boy Brandon Mitchell, 
is Spider in his way Donovan, all the way to the Donovan, freaking... for goodness sake, not Brandon. Donovan. Oh, my bad, my bad. My bad, my bad. I don't know why he's Brandon Mitchell. I just throw it off the tongue. But, yes, that man is... I got the nickname right. Spider-Man is just out here. He's he's going for... He's getting a number one seat, bro. He's getting a home court advantage. I don't think that man is stopping anytime soon. Okay. Don't sleep on Jazz. And he's got, you know, obviously a great supporting team. Very good. Um, and my other contenders is freaking the Lakers, bro. Obviously, the Lakers are going to come back from their fifth seed, and they're going to come back up. They're probably going to take the Clippers' spot, honestly, I think. Um, I don't know about the Suns, they, but you guys know that the Lakers are not going to go out like that. They're defending champs, bro. I don't know about AD, but LeBron is supposed to come back before the playoffs. They just picked up freaking Drummond, Drum, 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 Drum from the Cavaliers. Right. <laughs> yeah. I always mess up his name. That's the last name I butchered, but yeah. And he's he looked good today. I watched that game, <clears throat> and man, they're they're yeah, they okay. they're gonna they're gonna get it together. They're gonna go through a little struggle, obviously, but come playoffs, man, it's it's over with, bro. Gotcha. All right, SG three, your pretender, your contenders out of that top five. What do you got? All right. I want to hear that. So, <laughs> my contenders, my contenders, number one, the Utah Jazz. Mm-hmm. I have said it before, and I'll say it again. Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell. The spider, Donovan Mitchell. Plain and simple. I have nothing else to say about that. That man is just, that man is on another level, man. Mm-hmm. That man is literally something that, man, um, that man's that man special. Honestly, man, that, that, that man is special. So, definitely see him there. Um. I think that this is a team that doesn't get enough recognition, and I'm going to put them on my contender. Very good. And that is the Denver Nuggets. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the Denver Nuggets, man. Explain. Let them get let them get another supporting role player for uh, for, 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 for Joker. Yeah, I'm going to stop that, man. Okay. Yeah, y'all ain't stopping that, man. Okay. That's all I'm going to say right there. Yeah, um, just you said that the they're they're contenders, the Nuggets. Yeah, I said contenders. Okay, okay. Because remember though, they didn't also make it to the conference finals, and they don't have an All Star just one. Mm-hmm. You're right. I was just I rest my case. <laughs> I, rest, I rest my case. I have nothing else to say. That's number one. Number two, I was going with the pretenders. By the way, Zachary, Macri, Macri, Zachary, Zach Attack. Afro Puff, Afro Thunder. It is not clear whether he's going to come back, but because of his age and because of the severity of the, of the injury, he may not be back this season. And if that man is not back, believe me, the Lakers are going to drop to at least the number six or number seven spot of this season, brother. And then what happens is they're going to be eliminated in that first round. And I'm looking at you and saying, ha ha. But it's not going to happen. Uh. <laughs> the only saving grace Good. that they have is that maybe AD comes back. But I'm telling you one thing right now. If AD don't come back, LeBron James is coming back. I can guarantee you that right now. Watch. If okay. AD don't come back, LeBron James is going to say, you know what, guys? I'm going to take the season out because, you know what, guys? I'm, I'm just really hurt. My ankle kind of hurts. I've been kind of like supporting Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck over there for the longest time. Playing, playing with the Toon Squad, so I'm hurt, man. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't carry the Lakers. That's the only reason he even, wouldn't come back. That's the even only reason he's even like, even man, I can't. Even though AD right carried now. my team, I'm still gonna take the credit yeah. for that. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna be like, man, I just, I just, did a, I just played finals with the, the Looney Tunes. I don't got time for this, guys. That's funny. <laughs> That's I played against only... Don Cheadle. That's I played against Don Cheadle. Hell nah. Played against Don Cheadle. And so, you know what, guys? It tired me out. Played with a bunch of animatronics. It tired me out, man. I don't even want to do that. Yeah. So, I Fair feel enough, that bro. they're the pretenders. They're dropping. They, if, if he don't come back by April, they drop dropping to like six or seven. Done. It's not even. They only got this month, argument. man. They only got this month. The playoffs start next month, so. That's true. That is true. Remember, though, that, that six spot's kind of catching up, so be, mark my words. Either way, though, I think even as they say in the fifth, they're still going to get them in in the first round. All right, cool. So let's go back to the other pretender. So, yeah. Yeah, other pretender. Uh, the other pretender, I'm, I'm other pretender. As much as I hate to admit it, Miss Josephine Marcus, if you're listening, yes, yes, I know, I know what I said before. The Clippers. The Clippers are the pretender. Are they looking the just suspect? 
Aren't they nah, just man, the, Clippers just can't get, the Clippers just can't get it together. And I feel that yeah. they rely too much on Kawhi and, and George. George yeah. chokes in the playoffs. George George chokes in the playoffs, so now you're really relying on Kawhi. Mm-hmm. Kawhi George can't chokes, do it all by George, himself. He chokes like every other night. Oh, it's irritating, man. It, they did just get Rajon Rondo, though. They got playoff Rondo. Congratulations. But right, playoff Rondo can't play 48 minutes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's... I'm not a problem with Yeah. I'm, look, look. Right hey, <laughs> I want to play 15 minutes. I want to put this, my two cents in. the other 28. Yeah. I want to put my two cents in sure. this one real quick when you guys talk about the Clippers and be pretenders. I'm going to jump on this wagon too as well with this pretender stuff with the Clippers because they invested so much into getting Kawhi, investing so much in keeping Paul George. But in all honesty, in Kawhi's career, I am scared. I'm sorry to say he he's the type of player that cannot be surrounded by players like a freaking KD, players like a like all-star teams in general. Like what the what these other teams are doing on getting highlight big players to pair up with another one. Kawhi reminds me of an old-fashioned 90s type of player to where give me the team by myself, give me a good the next to great supporting cast players, bench solid bench players, great role players that are around around me in order for me to succeed. And the reason why I say that is because because of what he was successful in the Spurs and as far as what he was successful being in Toronto. It's just a testament to what his gameplay and his mannerisms are when it comes to being a team. He cannot play with highlight players like Apollo George. There is no cohesiveness there, and they've been trying it since the day they paired them up together, and it just doesn't work. It's not good for Kawhi, and nor or less is good for Paul. Go ahead. I feel I feel like at this point, if you think about it, he played in the he played in San Antonio when they had the big three. Right. Tim Duncan, Milo Ginobili, and and Trey Park uh, Tony Parker. Now, granted, they were already out there out of the way in the NBA when he came along. Right. However, though, I feel that. He can play with other star caliber players, but he has to play with someone who doesn't have an ego like Paul, like Paul George. That's the problem there. That, that George's ego is a problem. It's number one. Number two, I feel to what you said. Let me let me add to it. If we were to put a grading scale right now, give the Clippers C's and D's. I don't really give them F's because I don't. I, uh, the only team I can give an F is. Just right now, the, the Los Angeles Lakers without LeBron James, but not the point of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, at this point, man, um, I feel that if Kawhi had like a couple B's and C's on that team, and you know what, even one other A, hey, we have a different conversation. The Clippers actually look 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 for real, but until you can fill those gaps, uh. Uh-uh. uh and they're and they're not only filling it; they're adding like more all stars to it. And it's like, what do you like? It's it's kind of we. It's I don't know, man. Yeah. They, well, because unfortunate, unfortunately, my is, man. And my thing is, the owner watches the game every freaking every game they have. He watches at the stadium, and you're not irritated with your own team. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Well, I mean, let, let's be honest. The Lakers were irritated with what they had. That's why they went and got LeBron and AD. <laughs> hey, and hey, my thing is though, they got a ring out of it. You know what I'm saying? Lakers got a ring. They, at least one LA team got it. You know what I'm saying? Clippers were at it for uh, I don't know how long. They're building a team. They had freaking CP3, Griffin, freaking at one point Jordan. We messed it all up. They had uh, what uh, Crawford, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and then messed I it up. with the Clippers. They keep messing up on on the bench, man. They don't. They don't get it. Yeah, they don't get it. Man. Man. I agree, and I, 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 in this perspective with the Clippers right now, you, that's that's what you need. I think the the highlight of it is when it comes to having these these type of players like a Paul George and a Kawhi. You need a great bench. You need a phenomenal like yeah. you know the bench squad when Chicago was in the in the freaking uh, with Tom Thibodeau's time of, time of stage. You need bench players like those. You need bench players like what Kawhi had in Toronto. You need bench players what. Uh, freaking uh, the Boston Celtics had when they won their title. You need those caliber type of bench players to solidify your dominance going forward within the season as well as solidify your dominance in the playoffs because 
that's where it means that's where it means the most. That's where it's needed the most in the playoffs. You need solid bench players because you can't bust out and pull out these type of games where you're gonna go a full whole game playing and on the team, and then the next day be tired. You need to have solid bench players to kind of balance that out for you, so that way you don't have to do all that. You can just keep up with momentum and win games, plain and simple. So, also, yeah, you know what? I agree with that. Give us, give us your list on on the west side. <laughs> Who's a contender? Who's a? Well, I didn't even do it my east or west. Right. I'm gonna do both in this. Yeah, one. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. do my. I'll do both right. in this one. Okay. Uh, as far as pretenders and contenders on both eastern and conference, pretenders for sure on the eastern side. I'm gonna pick up the Hornets because of the fact that Ball left for the rookie season. He's not gonna be back at all whatsoever. They they are needed for yeah, him. So. They need him for sure in order to be successful. You can just tell Ball is is an actual key player to that team. And without that key player to that team, it will not go anywhere. So, yes, they kind of moved up from fifth to fourth right now, but I'm going to have to put pretenders. I'm also going to have to put the Hawks. I don't believe the Hawks are like an actual contender per se. The Hawks are pretenders in my perspective. They've I don't always blame been, you for that. I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't blame you. They've for that. kind of been on. They've always been on that perspective for the last two or three years. If, if I'm not mistaken, on being such a highlight team during the season, but when it comes to the playoffs, they kind of fall off within the first or second round. So that's why I say they're pretenders. Um, now, as far as contenders um, on the Eastern side, I'm gonna have to go with. I'm definitely going to have to go with the Nets, and I'm going to have to go with the 76ers, like you said. It's kind of weird that we're not mentioning the Bucks at all whatsoever. They're right there in the middle. But that's only because of what it, what Giannis can do in the playoffs. It's as far as what we can see. If Giannis can ball out, he may be able to knock off one of these teams if he's being supported. So that's a big if. That's a big question with that. So, he ain't going to get one of these, though. I don't think so. I really don't think so. I don't think so. He can get as many MVPs as he wants, but... Yeah, I don't think rings. so. I really don't think so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to go with that as far as contenders. Uh, Western side, definitely pretenders. The Lakers, sorry to say, they are pretenders. Like I said before, Clippers are pretenders as well, just because of what they got and what's going what's going on weirdly within the team itself. Contenders, definitely Jazz. Definitely Jazz is looking up there. And like SG3 said, I'm going to have to put Nuggets in there because Nuggets are stacked. Nuggets are actually really stacked. They got freaking Porter. They got Gordon they just, they just got from – They just picked up Gordon from Miami. They got Murray, who's been a baller. They got – They got – What's that other, uh, other big guy? Jonicic? Yon- Michael Porter Jr.? Well, I yeah, said the Michael Joker, Porter. Jokic, they got Michael Jokic. Porter Jr. So it's like mm-hmm. they Don't got forget, these... they also picked up Javel McGee. <clears throat> Javel McGee. So Freaking it's like McGee? you know they, they got they really That's good. This team up. is actually looking solidified. You know what I mean? They like I said before, you need that team to have those type of players to kind of you know move along the chain and kind of you know tweak out a little bit in and out of the games and stuff like that. They kind of give you a different five. So they have that. They have that. The Nuggets do. So it's kind of going to be a surprise yeah, to I see, never, and I think they're contenders. I never slept on the Nuggets, man. I yeah. learned my lesson the hard way sleeping yeah, on the Nuggets, they, man. They're, 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 they're riding uh, the ship right now. They're, as you would say, a Final Four, Final Four team usually. They're right. usually in there. Right, I agree. And I think I think by, with by, a smart by, by move. The way, by, by the way, uh, Tony, Tony the Kid, can I ask you a question? <clears throat> yeah. So why do you think that the Lakers are pretenders? Because LeBron's on the team. <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> even if even if he is even if he is uh on if even if he wasn't hurt, he's still a pretender to me. So I'm I'm always gonna put them on the You guys are just mad you guys are just mad because Zach Levine's not in the movie. That's all. You guys are just mad. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever, you guys are just mad because he was like, Yo, Zach, hit me up, bro. Nah, nah, fuck Chicago. <laughs> That's crazy. No, it's yeah, I'm gonna have, it's just as far as the Lakers are concerned, they don't have um, they don't have other players besides a LeBron or AD. And with That's AD fine. being injury prone, and fine. with Stay LeBron, sleep. and fine. with LeBron now getting injured for the second time in his career, within playing in the Lakers organization for the, in the last four years of his career, I'm sorry, it's not looking good for LeBron. This is looking it's like injury, his, his his peak is going. And you guys gotta understand, bro. I hate so, to defend this subject right here, but he was a flopper, and now he's a faker injurer. He's it comes with the age, bro. 
Like, it, oh, it makes sense. Ah, so he's Malay, a so Malay, he's, Malay. So not, not only, hold on, wait a minute. Not only, not okay, only he's not. a flopper now, but now he's a flopper fake injury. Yeah. Chao, Acho. That's two ups, man. I don't like how about that. That's what I'm saying. That's player. exactly what man, I'm saying. I don't know, man. I don't he, know, man. LeBron created, hey, man. Hey, man. LeBron created the La Flop, so now he's now he's kind of making the La Fake. So it doesn't he's, make, it yeah, doesn't go well. He's a La Flopper faker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it doesn't really fit well, but... Um, you know, I think that's where it's going. I think if if Lakers were to oh, fall man. off in this perspective and who would kind of take in their place, I think right now uh, the Mavericks, if I'm not mistaken, I think if they can kind of keep up with their winning and kind of take in the fifth place at that going forward. So, I mean, they're, they're only about two and a half games behind the Lakers at this moment right now as we speak. So, they can go. I mean, you know, you got freaking Damian. Damian Lillard, he can uh, go ball out for the Trailblazers a little bit and kind of get moving, moving the place quicker than the Mavericks. But I feel like the Mavericks, if if anything, um, towards the end of the season, I, I see them going forward too as well. So it is what it you is. Know, and and uh, I think as you just said it too, it's kind of who you, it's who the, uh, you know, the seasons. There's only six, six teams, I believe. Yeah. And uh, going into the like the playoff season and stuff like that, so it all comes on who they draw. I don't know if it's going to be like the six to one seed, you know, five to two, exactly. you know. So, by, 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 by the way, I'm just I'm just going to add this just to add insult to injury to you. That's when LeBron doesn't come back. Here goes the here goes the next eight games, I think. Three, six, yeah, eight games, eight games for for the, for the Lakers. Saturday they go against the Nets at Brooklyn. <laughs> Win. That's a lose. That's a loss. Monday, they go against the New York Knicks at New York. That no easy win. Loss. That's, That's kind of tough. That's Tuesday, a loss. Tuesday against the Charlotte Hornets. They may be able to win that one. Mm, win. Yeah, win. they may be able to win That's that one. <laughs> Thursday, the fifteenth against the Celtics. Celtics take that one. Yeah, win. We're looking great. We're looking great. Thanks. <laughs> now, I Greatly horrible. Out of these last four, y'all gonna lose three. He said, "I guarantee." And then, and then you got the Jazz twice. Then you got the Mavericks twice. So, like, come on, man. Those the, the Mavericks are at Dallas twice. Yes. And then, and then to finish it off, you got in May. Okay, this is your May schedule, kind of heading in there. You First off, you got the Raptors you go against. Then you go against the Nuggets Easy. on the third. Nuggets going to sweep them. Then you go against the Clippers where, overtime. you know, mm, over. yeah, I, I can see a double overtime in the, on that one. And somehow whoever wins isn't going to look pretty. Um, then you got the Trailblazers on the seventh. And then Brown comes back right before the first game playoffs. Uh, Brown comes back. Boom, that. Simple, then right? you got the Suns after the after the Trailblazers. <laughs> Suns win that one. Then you got again the Knicks. Then you're going against the Rockets, where you can see you win that one. Then you get the Pacers. You could probably win that one. Pelicans. You're gonna go against the Pelicans as your last final game, I believe. And I think Zion's gonna bulldoze all over you guys. So yeah, you got that win right there from the, on the Pelicans side. Hey, Ron, so, all right, thanks for the confidence, guys. Uh, <laughs> so, so one more time, maybe brother, out of those last four in, in April, or excuse me, out of, the, out of those mid four in April, y'all are going to lose three. At least. <laughs> Guaranteed. At least. Y'all yeah, lose yeah, three. About, the only thing I'm worried about right now is the Jazz. That's the only team that is <laughs> making me worried. Maybe <laughs> should be worried about the oh, same division. Oh, player here. Out. Maybe but if they meet the Nets, if they meet the Nets in the playoffs, obviously the Nets are gonna win if they're like not stacked. Up. But but we're not we're, we're crossing the bridge when we get there. Yeah, right yeah. now we're only worried about the Suns and the Jazz. Okay, we'll take it one day at a time, guys. All right, one day at a time. Sounds good. <laughs> you say so. That's all we can do. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that concludes our show at the moment. Right now, I don't I, believe we have any I other sports news. To say, though. Oh, SGD, go got, right ahead. Two more things to say. Trust me, people. I don't like. I don't like the sound of my voice. It's just the fact that Tony doesn't mention a lot of these sports. In. <laughs> so, number one, I'm gonna just say this right now: to the Baylor Bears, congratulations on being the NCAA March Madness champions. They defeated the Glendale Zags in the final. They destroyed the perfect season. Yeah, they destroyed the perfect season. It's crazy. It's good. It was really crazy. That defense, though, man, is crazy. It's literally crazy. Um, that's number one. Perfect. Want to say also 
Need for Speed Championships, the Bay the Bears did what they had to do. They literally just are not just nullified the, the attack of Gonzaga, and man, they blew them boys out. To Gonzaga, I wish y'all a lot of luck. Hope y'all come back. On the ladies' side, though, I'm not forgetting the ladies. On the ladies' side, Stanford beat Arizona 54-53. Looks like it came down to the wire, man. Those are the type of games I love personally. Down to the wire, to the point where they're like making you like like SpongeBob. I remember that one episode of SpongeBob where like where he was eating his hands and it just kept growing and he would eat his hands again and it kept growing like <laughs> eating his hands. And that's the kind of games I, I love, <laughs> and I feel like that could have been like that kind of game. Um, yeah. That's for sure. That's 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 right there. Um, and now I'm gonna switch it over now to uh, soccer. UEFA Champions League happened this week. <clears throat> Quick roundup: PSG beat Bayern Munich three to two. So right now the champions are are at um I see that. At a, they're, they're they're at a negative right now, which isn't good for the champions. Yeah. Chelsea yeah. beat Porto two nothing. Um, who else is next? You currently also had who else played? Man, really? Um, oh, Dortmund lost two. They lost to to Manchester City. And then I'm Manchester missing one more. Did. Manchester did get in that ass. Sorry, cut. <laughs> Dude, Manchester, Manchester City, they, 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 did, they, they did some good stuff, man. They did some stuff, man. I forgot who else played. Literally, I. Oh, Liverpool versus Real Madrid. Liverpool, unfortunately, because of the defense, they didn't have nothing there. They didn't show up. 3 1. So, it's going to be interesting to see the next round. The, uh, next week is round two. So, we're going to see what happens there. After that, you're going to go to the semifinals and finals in, in May. It's going to be a very interesting time. Uh, that's the number one. Number two, uh, last but not least, for all my baseball fans, baseball has come right back up. The Sox currently are three and four. They won today. Hallelujah. Uh, the Cubs currently cool. are four and three. They the Sox are fourth in their in their division, and in uh, the Cubs division, they're second or third. So it's again right there. So it's you know still a long long time, long season. It's exciting. Let's go. It's it's going to be a great day for 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 baseball fans, for soccer fans, for for all the kinds of fans. So I just had to say that. Tony the kid, what were you going to say? Uh, well, I think we're going to be heading out for the show at the moment. That's pretty much all we had on the list and schedule. So, as far as our final conclusion to the show, Zach Attack, anything before we leave? Um, listen, guys, shout out to all the Lakers fans. You know, we're going to get through this, guys. <laughs> we're going to get through this. It's not a big deal. We made a good pickup. Um, it's fine. The playoffs are on the corner. It's fine. It's gonna be fine. We don't listen to SG three for the negatives. We don't listen to Tony Kidd and the hating of LeBron. It's gonna be a great year. <laughs> hey guys, defending champs. You know, it's whatever. You know, that's for the Laker fans and Bron Bron fans. With that being said, um, we got a lot of interesting stuff going on though in NBA. The playoffs are going to kick up. Uh, your boy Zach the Mac is gonna be covering it all. Um, it's going to be good, guys. It's going to be definitely interesting playoffs. No matter how it goes, you guys know me. I don't give a freak. I don't really care who wins at the end of the day. I want to see a great game. I want to watch freaking 10 overtimes in one game, bro. I don't care. As long as it's a beautiful game, I'm there. All sports uh, is amazing to me. So, great show, guys. Love you guys. Keep following us on all social media, Twitter, everything you can. You know, love you guys. Thank you for, you know, everything. All these fans are the best. SG3. Go ahead, man. Guys, I want to say we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thank you very much for the likes, for the follows, for the subscribes, for everything, for the thumbs up, for the for the comments. We appreciate it all. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of all our hearts. Um, to Macri Zachary, to all the Laker fans, including yourself, Miss Josephine Marquez. No. <laughs> I will not take back my comments. The Lakers are the pretenders. He said no. <laughs> if, LeBron, if LeBron doesn't come back, if LeBron doesn't come back and added his AD, where does, his, where does your season go? Oh, yeah, to your couch. <laughs> Good luck. As it is, I gotta say one more time. Thank you for everything. Talk to the kid. Well, by the way, last thing. Wishing you very speedy, very, very, very fast and speedy recovery. DMX, please, please, please DMX. keep fighting, brother. Keep, keep fighting. Uh, <laughs> and now at this point, I'm gonna just give it over to to, to my main man, Tony the Kid. Go ahead and say a final thing against these Laker fans. Sorry. <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna jump on no more. We already said our two piece, Josephine, about the Lakers and LeBron himself. So, Josephine, this is to you. Good luck. I know you guys are gonna need it because uh, sorry, um, you're not going nowhere at the end of the season. 
You won't be even in, you won't even be a, a, a thought process in the playoffs. I apologize for that, and I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, you know, I, I wish wish all the best for you, no doubt on that. Um, but you know, we'll we'll see what next season got for you guys. We'll see what happens there. I'm sure you guys. I'm sure you guys will try to pick up a Steph Curry and all this stuff like that, and try to. Try to add more people because you guys are scared now of what's Nets doing over there. So I can see why you guys can sit back and relax a little bit. It's okay. Um, but, uh, I'm probably going to try to add Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So as far as as far as far uh, the show itself, uh, thank you guys again for tuning in. Thank you for all the followers going on on Instagram. We are momenting. Uh, Facebook as well. We're gaining proportion there. We truly appreciate it. Listeners and viewers on our podcast, it's growing. It's adding more. Thank you for that as well. We're going to kind of continue with our content for sure, no doubt. So I want to thank you guys for joining me on this uh, Rejects in the Booth today. And we're going to continue on next week, so tune in for that. Uh, that's been brought to you by RWA Productions. And you guys have a good one. Take it easy. Live free. Peace, love, and